In this week's episode of Back to Basics with Todoist, we're going into the settings. Hello, my name is Carl Pauline and this is the fifth episode of Back to Basics with Todoist. And in this week's episode, we are going to be talking about the settings and all the little things that you can do with Todoist to make it more personal and more unique for your own needs. Now, the truth is there is a lot of things that you can do with Todoist to make it more personal. There's a lot of things you can do in the settings to change things around to make it work for you. What I want to do is to focus on the basics for you, but really it's up to you to go in and start playing around with Todoist to get the most out of these settings. But the key factor in all productivity tools is simplicity. I really cannot stress that enough. You need to keep your system as simple as you possibly can. So it's really, really important to remember that. But what I want to do is to show you some of the things that people have asked me about, like how do you uh, change the format of the text? How do you set up the notifications? How do you set up email? Uh, emailing tasks directly into your Todoist account. And I'm going to cover all of those in today's episode. So before we get into the episode, I would just like to say if you really like this video, please click on the like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe to the channel. You'll find it just down there. I think it's just down there. So please just click on the like. And while you're at it, click on the subscribe as well. It just takes a split second to do that. Okay, let's go into Todoist and have a look at what the things that you can do to set up Todoist to make it a little bit more unique for yourself. Right, here we are in my demo account of Todoist and the first thing I want to show you and something that I always recommend and I've recommended this for so many times is when you open your Todoist you're sometimes going to see this orange dot above the settings icon. So this orange dot up here. What you need to do when you see that is to go down to the section where it says new version available. Click on that and it will automatically update your Todoist to the latest version. Now if you're curious about what's happened you can just click on the change log here. So down at the bottom click on the change log and that will take you to tell you what has actually happened. So here it says version, this is fixed a couple of issues. So archive project view sometimes when and blah. But that is something that I strongly recommend that whenever you see the orange icon, uh, orange dot above your settings icon, then whatever happens, just click on the update version and let your Todoist update. Okay, now one of the most commonly asked questions I get is how do you add icons to your projects and to your tasks? Well, let's start with the tasks because they're very simple. Uh, all you need to do is this is a task and all you need to do is from here, uh, from if you're doing it from Safari or from Google, you can just go emojis and symbols and you can just add in. So if you're using an Apple computer, you can just add in your task and that's going to come up and that will work throughout your devices. Now you can do this of course using your mobile device and actually to be honest if for most people I guess using your mobile device is going to be the easiest way to do this. Now the same thing applies to your um, projects. You can just go into projects. So I'll just take this. We've got a daily routine so I can just add edit the project. So I've now got the icon running. Again I'm just going to add into my emoji and symbols will come up and I can just add in whatever emoji I want. So uh, I don't really, think, let's just say, oh, let's just click, double click on that, add that and sure enough. Now the thing is you can actually put spaces in there, by the way, I should have put a space in because I always do. Um, and then you can just save it as that. So I've now got my routines. You can do the same for work. So that is the emojis thing. You can add, oops, 
oh sorry I put that emoji into my daily thing so that's the way to do it uh, to putting emojis in that's the easy one to do uh, text formatting is another one that people have asked me about well these are quite simple to do uh, somebody did point out to me this week that if you put a double star you can actually um, so text in bold uh, bold and then again double star uh, I say star it's actually asterisk isn't it so you it actually um, bolds your text for you uh, the incompletable task that's a little bit more uh, complex which I, I don't really want to put into these back to basic version um, back to basic series uh, you can actually do the um, the italics so if you wanted to say put in uh, your text into a italics is just one star so this is italics so oops can't spell it. italics and it's just one star so you can just click on the star button there and you can just add that and now that your task is in italics so those are the two most common ones that you may want to use when you are actually formatting your text now one of my favorite aspects of Todoist is how they actually use um, links in into your uh, actual tasks so here I have the um, the formatting tasks so you can actually look at it bold and italic by the way it's star double star bold and italic and then you can see how it works this one is my favorite one um, I love this because it really does speed things up and all you have to do so let's just say that I want to uh, put in um, or go, go back to this one so I want to put this link into a task so I'm going to highlight the link I'm going to copy it I'm going to move it to here and I will paste the link in now if I just add the task now it's just going to be the link and sure enough it is a clickable link so that's perfectly okay if you're happy with that however this is one of the cool things. So you've got here, actually Todoist has done it for me. It's actually put in the brackets now, Todoist support. If I save that now, look what happens. Todoist support comes up here. That to me is really, really cool because I can just click on that. It just looks neater and tidier in my tasks. Okay, one more thing that I want to show you is let's say I'm going to use a text, a simple text editor for this. This is a, an, a, an application that I use called uh, Byword. I love Byword because it's just a really simple text editor. So let's say now that I want to create and I'm planning a project and I really want to um, just plan this in a simple text editor or even indeed Evernote. You can do it in Evernote. So this is task one. Um, task two um, task three and all I'm doing is just creating a list here okay and if I wanted to now add in a um, a label so at home for example I can just add it at home um, if I want to do a task oops, task six um, at work um, and so what I've basically done is I've just created a list now all I have to do now is if I uh, copy the link and go into uh, to do it now the thing you have to do is you have to click on add task and then paste you are going to get this uh, dialogue here which says do you want to add six tasks add six tasks look what actually happens now the thing is I have a pro I think I have a thing I don't have a label called work no I don't uh, let me just go for we'll, we'll do this one again so I'll just get rid of these oops I'll just get rid of these tasks here because what I want to do oh we have a label here for home because I have one at home but I didn't have a label for work which is why it came up at work but you can see what I've done there that is a really really quick way of taking tasks from one area and moving into the other now one thing I should warn you about is I have discovered and some people have pointed out that this doesn't work from a Microsoft Word document. It needs to be a simple text editor like Byword or even Evernote actually works.
Okay, one more thing that I want to show you, actually a couple more things that I want to show you is uh, in the settings. Now what you can do here with settings is there's so many things that you can do with settings and you can go into that and just do whatever you want to do with settings. But you can actually create yourself an avatar picture. You can just click edit and it'll say upload a picture or choose a file. You know, So having an, an avatar is a really nice way of personalizing your um, account. But what I want to do is go into here, show you into here in the preferences you can actually go into the, your theme so if you go into click edit you can now choose different themes now i am a big fan of the sunflower color so i'm clicking on the sunflower color so if i close my settings now you'll see that i now have uh, the sunflower color up at the top but although i think it does look nice on the computer the sunflower color to me just looks absolutely gorgeous on a mobile device but the thing I like about the sunflower color particularly is that the icons up at the top are a nice contrasting black. If I look at some of the other ones that you have, uh, I find that the the colors, uh, the contrast is not so good. Now, um, I've lost my gold theme. Uh, I have a gold theme in my main account because I've reached a certain level, but I think it's the tangerine where we might actually have white. I think is the color yeah white and although on on this mac which is a, a retina display uh, macbook pro the colors are actually very very contrasty i find it's not very contrasting on my imac which doesn't have the that retina display so some of the other settings that you can do and this is something that i really would strongly advise you to do is your start page now the start page is where you can actually choose. So if I go into my inbox, uh, if I go into my to do is and click on the icon up at the top left here, it takes me to my today view and that is the default view. Clicking on the to doist logo in the top left will always take you back to your default view, which is comes factory fitted if you like uh, as your today view, but you can change that. And what you can do is go into settings again, uh, preferences, and here you'll say start page, and it'll give you a lot of in, um, it'll give you a lot of uh, options here. It gives you related to your actual uh, project, so you can have it set up with a project, or you can go into custom query, and from custom query you can actually set whatever you want. Um, I'll show you from my main account here because. Um, It'll just be faster to show you it this way because I can't remember. I have my home pages set up with P inbox. That's the project inbox overdue and today. This is my, oh, and waiting for. So I have one, two, three, four parts to it because I think this tells me everything I need to know. It's like a dashboard. So my uh, setup for this is we're going to settings, preferences, and you look see it here p inbox overdue today and at waiting for that's how i've set this up so uh actually you can't it's better to see it. so what we've got is p inbox overdue today and waiting for that waiting for is a label p is the project overdue and today are the two <clears throat> kind of settings that uh, to do is uses so what you'll find here is you whatever order you put this in that is the order is going to show so for example, if we go into here, my custom query, I'm going to edit it. I'm going to put P double dot inbox um, today and overdue. Actually, that's the same as what I've done. Let's just go around the other way. Um, so today uh, over, uh, overdue, comma, and then at, I don't know if I've got at waiting for in this one, but uh, we'll see. So save that. And so that's now in there. If I close out of that and I click on my icon up here, you see, <laughs> I knew I would do it wrong. I always have to go back. So P inbox comma overdue today. Um, I put a space in it. That's what I did. Um, this is a lot of trial and error, guys. I should point out it is trial and error. Let me just go into this. Um, where am I? Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, it's probably because I haven't got. Yeah, let's just change that to uh, uh, p double dot 
waiting at uh, inbox okay i'm going to save that this should work this time <laughs> so, <laughs> i always find it very funny so if i click on appear and sure enough so i got today and then i got my inbox which is showing up underneath so this is one of the things that you can do and i always strongly recommend is that you set that up to suit yourself but again guys don't go crazy keep it simple so for me as i say in my main account i i prefer it in my main account because um this is set up exactly how i would be looking at my end of day view so anything that's overdue uh because yesterday was Friday, I was quite a couple of things that I want to, uh, I would have overdue. I can actually have done that one today. Um, today, and then I've got my waiting for. So these things uh, is exactly how I like to see my Todoist. And that really is all I wanted to cover in this episode. I could go on and give you hundreds and hundreds of different tips and tricks, but really I think it's best that you go out there now and you play with your Todoist and see what you can and cannot do. It is an amazing application. It can really, really turbocharge your productivity. It can keep you on track. And seriously, guys, I have not found a better productivity tool out there. I know this is just my personal opinion, but I have tried a lot, and Todoist has always been the best in my opinion. Okay, thank you very much for watching this series. Don't forget, if you like this video, please click on the like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And it just remains for me now to wish you all an incredibly productive week.